Hi guys, I just finished dinner, another round of Q&A. Oh, this is actually getting tiring. Okay, Mr. Wong. Hi Bobby, you missed my question. Sorry. Um, do you recommend to buy demo? Um, yes. Yes. Um, get the 330i instead of a 320i. Um, 330i demo. Yeah, go get it. Uh, yeah, so of course, uh, I said might have been driven by a car reviewer, but actually BMW rotates their cars very fast, and a lot of dealer actively register their cars as a demo car so that they can sell it to you at a cheaper price. Um, you will wonder, is that a discount? No, they're actually making a loss, but uh, because it's a demo car and uh, they get some rebates from the manufacturer. If, and then if they hit their total target, they get some incentive. So they are actually making a loss on the car. It's just that if they are able to hit the volume, they get the uh, rebate in terms of their, the price where they buy the car. Let's say one year they bought 100 cars, let's say. Okay, they buy at this price. But when they hit the quota of let's say 50 cars, uh, their 100 car price would, might, might drop by 2% or 3% and then that is the incentive that they get. <clears throat> So that's why they can sell you cars at a loss, right? So go get the 330i demo car, yeah. Um, but if you haven't heard it, the the new 3 Series has been updated with um, autonomous uh, emergency braking, or um, maybe that is something that you might want, up to you. Um, hi Bobby, Toyota Harrier, is it a good car to buy? Yes, it is a good car, all right? Hi Bobby, E90, 320 or 325? Of course, 325, six cylinder. Why you want a four cylinder BMW? Six cylinder sounds beautiful. Yeah, and 2.5, road tax isn't too crazy. It's like 800 ringgit or 900 ringgit compared to three liter. All right, hi Bobby, can I get a 10 year old Porsche Cayman for a 100k budget? Nope, 100k Cayman, you'll be looking at early 2000s, 2003 or 2004. 15, 16 year old. There's no Cayman back then. There's only Boxster. No. 10 year old Cayman, you won't be able to get it at 100k. It might be 100 ish, 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 ish. Let's fire up Muda or Carlist. Right? I don't think it's that cheap. No Cayman should be that cheap. <coughs> I could be wrong. Oh, crap. I'm wrong. Okay, these are 2006, 2008, 2007, 2007. Like I said, if, if it is still eligible for loan, it will be at a higher price. Okay? All these drop because they are no longer eligible for loan. Okay? And, uh, just look at it, 2011 came in, 169,000, okay, 2011, 2010, 190,000, I mean, the variations are there, la. but the moment you drop to 2009, 150k, 2008, 130k, 120k, and it's only when you reach 2007, 2006, or 2000, yeah, 2006, then you will see it drop to 80,000, 90,000. All right? Those are not eligible for loan anymore. They would drop by a larger margin. And then it will stay there. Um, hi, Bobby. I've been eyeing a G20. Should I get it or should I wait a few more months for better spec? You got it. The better spec is in. Get the one with the AEB. BMW answered. So, Mr. Zarif, if you're watching this, um, the, the updated G20 has AEB. All right? Uh, Toyota GR Corolla, no news of it, no news, but there's news of the GR Yaris, um, but of course it's reported by websites that are chasing clicks, so they will jump on news on the, at the first instance and then, uh, oh well. <coughs> Hi Bobby, what do you think about the romantic idea of buying a scrap metal car and fully restoring it? I want to buy a 30 year old car, but the drive and go ones are just too expensive. 
Will fully restoring a scrap metal car be cheaper than just buying a drive and go one? No, no. Uh, buying a drive and go should be depending on what car. <coughs> I have, I have no idea what car are you talking about, right? If you if you buy a if you buy a crap BMW E30 that is rusted and all that, right? It's um. It might still maybe cost you three thousand, and then somewhere somehow someone is buying is selling one that is in running condition for seven thousand or nine. Um, try your best to look for one that is still working. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, hi Bobby. What is the recommended driving position? Now I can't demo it here, but what you can do is you. This was taught to me by Mazda engineers. No engineers from their Jinba Itai division. So you bas basically slot your entire seat all the way to the front, cram your legs, and then you slowly release it until you no longer feel stress here on your feet. You know, And then make sure that when you fully brake your car, when you fully brake 100%, your legs are not straight. You, you, your legs must be at least half an angle when you do a full braking, why? If your if your legs are fully straightened up, that means you have locked your kneecap. So the moment you lock your kneecap, if you go into an accident, the force will come straight, and then you will pop your kneecap. You will break your kneecap. Then you will be in serious injury. But if there is still a slight bend when you fully brake your car, when an accident happens, your legs can retract. All right. Uh, and then as for your arms, um, your hands, the old driving instructors, when I was learning for driving, they are still teaching 10, 10 and 2 o'clock position, all right? But now, the, it should be 9 and 3 o'clock. Why? Because your airbags comes out like that. You don't want your hands to be here and the airbags will push your arm, it might break your elbow, it might twist your arm, it might send your metal G-shock, Okay, it might send, let's say someone who drives really cool like that. And then an accident happened. So you're just driving, you're looking there, and then one car comes out from his lane and boom, straight into you. Your airbags deploy, your entire hand will fly, and then your G-Shock will lodge in your forehead. So, 10 to 3, and then again, make sure your hands are in this kind of angle when you're holding your steering wheel, so that you can have... A large degree of turn so they can maneuver your car better instead of straighten out <coughs> you can turn less all right and this is faster all right um hi Bobby I'm planning to get an MK7 Golf GTI I heard some issues with turbochargers and whatnot but well, the problem is this this is a sort of like a hot hatch right hot hatch people who drive aggressive and all that and um, if you're talking 2015 car, it's already five years old. Generally, shouldn't have too big of an issue, but then you also should check on um, the, the engine. See, the thing is this. Your turbocharger also needs cooling. Okay? So, if, you, if, you, if, if, if that car has experienced uh, not enough engine oil, you know, and, uh, there, will, and there might be sludge, in the turbocharger as well. All these things can happen. It's not, even if I tell you now, go ahead, doesn't mean the car you get won't run into some issues, right? At the end of the day, right, you need to check the service record. You need to do your due diligence. You need to get the car to be inspected and and then make sure it's all right. There's no oil leaks and all that, right? So that's why we set up Evo Club. That's why we set up this whole thing. That's why we spent two years to get you uh, an extended warranty for cars that can buy and uh, an inspection, 42 inspection centers that we partner with and then after, if you manage to buy an extended warranty, there are 78 workshops out there to take care of your car across the country, right? We want to take care of car buyers. <coughs> that is the reason we are here, right? To let you know what car to buy, what car, what car is crap, what car has issues. And we try our best, lah, huh? Hi Bobby, I'm 
planning to get a used car and I have three cars in my mind now. Mazda 3, Honda Accord 2015. Which is the best car and most reliable? Honda Accord. Mazda 3. Mazda 3 2016, Honda Accord 2015. I love the Honda Accord 2015 one. And uh, 316i 2014, which is the Unicef Spec 3 Series. I think all three of them are reliable enough. Of course, the Accord would be a lot more because it's, uh, it's Honda. Right? Mazda as well, Mazda no issues. All right? 2016, is it, a, is it a current one? No, it's not a current one, it's a previous one. Um, never heard too big of, a, of an issue with a car. Mm, are these three cars similar price now? If they're similar price, all cars are okay for you. And of course, on the Accord, the best bang for buck. Right? If you want more fun, you can get a BMW. All right? Hi Bobby, do you think the FJ Cruiser? Yes, please get the FJ Cruiser. I love this car. I love the FJ Cruiser. Uh, to substitute my daily driver as my daily driver with my Ranger Raptor and GLA 45. Mm, you have taste, bro. This guy has taste. Billy Jean. GLA 45, brilliant. Ranger Raptor, oh brilliant. FJ Cruiser, fantastic, man. Your lineup is exciting. I like your car taste. <clears throat> Hi, but which car is better? 86 or Golf GTI MK6? I will go for an 86 because an MK6 GTI, it's not that it's bad. It's already 7 years old. But a 7 year old Volkswagen and a 7 year old Toyota is very different. Huh? Very, very, very different. Um, get the 86. Okay. Why is that trees are so expensive? Because they're rare. 1.9, yeah, I know, crap engine. But you can't find a 3 liter, sorry. Um, but they're cool. They're small. Yeah, they're rare. But if you have big size like me, <laughs> the Zetris won't fit you, man. Uh, hi, Bobby. Blah, 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 blah. Let me click read more. My choice, Honda Civic, Toyota Vios. Civic, Vios? Hmm. Or a 2012 Golf GTI. <sighs> 2012 Golf GTI. How much is it now? Cannot be at the price of a Honda Civic, right? Brand new some more, you say. 2012 Golf GTI. It's only 60 plus thousand. Your, your Honda Civic is... You can, you can buy two Golf GTIs, you can buy two 2012 Golf GTIs for the price of your Honda Civic. Or did you type wrongly a Honda City? City Vios 2012 Golf GTI, then maybe that's it. If these three are your choices, then for me, I will go for the GTI. Because I'm not afraid of Volkswagen. <laughs> mm. Hi Bobby, I like the sound of your car. Yeah, me too, thank you. I like it as well. Um... What are your thoughts on Audi Q5 2013? It's a, it's a nice car. The Audi Q5 is a brilliant, beautiful car. And then the new one just, just looks like they didn't put any effort. If you look at the GLC, right, from the side view, the GLC is like a carbon copy of the original Audi Q5. The proportions, you know, how they design the tailgate and all that. And almost everything is like a carbon copy of the original Q5. It's a brilliant car. The Audi Q5 is so ahead of its time. It came out in 2008. I remember the press photos are shot in Beijing Olympic Stadium. It's such a beautiful car. And until now, when I see one on the road, especially the facelift one, it still looks like a current generation car. Beautiful. The Walter De Silva era Audis are just wonderfully designed. 2008, 2009, 2010. Beautiful cars. Jaguar XJ. Please get it. How much are they now? Ah? Oh, the Jaguar XJ is just beautiful, man. Wait, wait, wait. You're, you're talking 2012 or 2013? 2013 Jaguar XJ. Oh, this is a beautiful car. 180,000. Get it, man. I mean, please get this car. It's, it's, it's achingly beautiful. It is just achingly beautiful. 
you take the Jaguar XJ, you park next to the, the, the S Class or the Seven Series or Audi Eight or whatever, right? It is the most beautiful one out there. All right. Hi, Bobby. You should let viewers know when you decide when you decided to sell the Six Series. Actually, if you come to me and open a price, I might consider. It's just that I have no rush to sell it until I have. <laughs> Hi Bobby, is it worth buying? Ooh, two questions on six series. Is it worth buying a six forty i cabrio with a hundred twenty thousand km mileage? There's only one for sale out there. I mean, I didn't list mine. And let me give you the link. Yeah, it's this one. There's only one out there. Yeah, buy. If it is 120,000 km mileage, right, maybe the owner has changed uh, the important components already. It's past the 100k mark. Okay, I need to speed up. <laughs> um, hi, Bobby. Any recommendation for a full-size seven-seater SUV with all-wheel drive and a four-seater rear-wheel drive hardtop convertible? Mm, what kind of question is this? <laughs> full-size seven-seater SUV, XC90, Mazda CX-9, done. Uh, or the Koreans, you know, the Hyundai, blah, blah, Kia, blah, blah, Kia Sorento, Hyundai, what, Santa Fe? Four-seater rear-wheel drive, hard dog, convertible, BMW 4 Series. Yeah. Hi, Bobby, I saw your car on Muda. Hmm, yeah, my S4, the dealer listed up on Muda already. Um, hi, Bobby, MX-5 hard top, 80,000, 2010, buy. Uh, this car is selling at lower, below market value because... Um, the MX-5 NC by right should have gone up above 100k okay buy 80,000 buy immediately after you buy you buy the car you list it up on Muda and Carlis at 120,000 to help protect your own value hi Bobby I'm 21 years old blah 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 I want a 1.4 TSI or a Sirocco um, get a Sirocco please get the Sirocco okay I'm a swimming coach now Mr. Jaden, 21 years old, want to buy your own car, works as a swimming coach. Fantastic young man. Fantastic young man. I like young people like that. Are you still studying? Or if you want a job, come to us. No, no, we're not hiring yet. <laughs> MCO, ah. Do you know the company closed down or not? Okay. Um, yes, my car is at Muda. Another guy reminded me again. Procedure of changing your second-hand car plate numbers. Now, if you have a used car or a car that has already been registered in Malaysia, you cannot change to an old plate, an old car number plate. Right? If your car... Let's say you have a... <clears throat> last month, you bought a car. Alright? And then now, you're driving it already. Or yesterday, you bought your car, already got a number plate. Today, you are driving it. You cannot change your plate to another car that you saw, WVE1. You cannot. Old plates, weirdly, weirdly, don't ask me why. Old plates can only go to new cars and old cars can only get new plates. Yeah. So a new car can choose whether they want an old plate or a new plate. But an old car can only get new plates. Got it? Um... Procedure, procedure, just, just, just buy the plate number uh, and then uh, and then tell a runner, hire a runner. It's too troublesome for me. La. Honda Civic 1.5 Turbo or GT86? GT86. If you ask me this question, that means you don't need a 5-seater 4-door car yet. You just need a car. You're not married. You don't have a family yet. You just need a car for yourself. Get the GD86, a four-door Japanese reliable family car, can always buy later. Alright? I always answer the same way. What are the best investments to improve a car's handling? Now, I'm not an expert in this, but the things that you mentioned, change the suspension, sway bars, tires, foaming, all this, yes. All these are things that you can do for your car. Okay? Um, or buy another one. Um, you're not blah, 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 blah. you're not squeezing the end, the power of your car. Cayenne Turbo is six hundred horsepower. Lambo Urus is six hundred forty horsepower. 
Now the thing is this, when car makers have an engine that produces 500 horsepower there, 800 horsepower there, they are not just a software away, okay? They might have a larger cooling fan, they might have larger fuel pumps, they might have different fuel lines. There are a lot of components that are different. So don't believe that the engine is absolutely identical and they are just a software away. Some, yes, but when there's a big disparity, no. Okay. Um, hi, Bobby. What are your thoughts on a V60 T5? Mr. Adam, 2013 V60 T5. Lovely car. 508 wagon. Now, I prefer the design of the 508. I prefer the interior design of the 508. I prefer the exterior design of the 508. Uh, I prefer everything about the 508 apart from the engine. That 1.6 turbo to me is not powerful enough. It's, uh, Peugeot's downsizing was a bit too aggressive in this manner. I would prefer they just leave it with a 2 liter turbo for all their cars. But they went 1.6. Um, in terms of engine, I think the V60 T5 uh, engine is more robust. But handling wise, uh, I think both are very near to one another. Uh, in terms of reliability, the Volvo will be better, slightly. Um, both are great cars. Both are great cars. Alright? Um, what do you think of a 19-year-old owning a CLA 45 AMG? What would you say to him? Good job. See, I don't judge people. Right? I mean... If your parents are rich, you actually swim for it, way, right? Your father punched you out, right? Amongst hundreds of millions, you fucking win the swimming competition. So don't be envy to people who are born into a rich family. They have no choice. Same as the person born in a poor family. They also have no choice, alright? Don't just because someone has money and then you have the license to tease them, to laugh at them, to look down on them. Be considerate to rich people. <laughs> I'm saying it seriously, but in a joking manner. I, I myself find it irony. Isn't it? Hey, good for you. If you're 19 years old and you want to own a CLA 45, you have the money to do so, I mean, or your, or your family are supportive, by all means, all right? Um, just be proud and tell people, yeah, yeah, my, my parents are nice to me. They got me this car. Or if you earn your own money, tell people, I earn my own money. All right? Be open about it. A lot of youngsters, they like to pretend. Oh, I was doing some shit and then the guy got me the dough and the shit and the yo-yo. Fuck lah. Ah, okay, sorry. Hi, Bobby. 190,000 Pure GTI. Better deal than most of the other hot hatches out there. Yes, in a way, yes. But... Maybe people do not know that you know, hundred ninety k is a bar is a bargain compared to others. They are they are, they they were all priced at what two hundred sixty seventy eighty thousand. Um, yeah, it's a great deal. If may I say the three way GTI is is the one that doesn't look the most exciting compared to the others out there as well. You know. The way it looks is just like a CX-5 and CX-5 2.5 turbo. It's a lot more powerful. But where is the that, that zing factor, right? You look at the Renault Megane RS compared to a normal Megane, it's different, right? Civic, Civic Turbo and a Civic Type R is different, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, is it necessary to blow the car that fast with a small daughter in the car? Of course it's not necessary. And how do you know my car is fast? It's, maybe it's not fast. It's just loud. It's a V12. I'm just playing with my daughter. Okay. Um, hi, Bobby. 2011 EOS. Is it worth to buy? Yes. Try and nego the price. Because I don't think a lot of people out there are looking for this car. Uh, it's a very nice Golf Cabriolet in a way. Yes, it's called EOS, but it's a Golf. All right. It's fast enough, it's comfortable enough, and surprisingly, the rear seat is rather comfortable for a convertible. Get the car! But it's not, I don't know what's the price, it should be 60, 70,000. 
um, make sure the car is alright, check the condition, check the transmission, check the engine, check for oil leaks, check for everything, alright? Check the roof mechanism. The roof mechanism mechanism should be all right. They all they all made by what's that company? I forgot. Never mind. Irresponsible. Yeah, irresponsible comment as well. You just bleh. okay. Uh, is it okay to get a ten year old? Of course, if you can get a newer one, then you should get a newer one. But then, if your budget only allows you to get it, again, I always say this. If you look at Carlis and Muda, you think your budget can only go for a 10-year-old one, then you should take your budget and look for a 7-year-old one or an 8-year-old one and try and nego. Alright? Hi, Bobby. I always love the 599 GDB. Hmm. Is that an awesome car? Uh, what are the chances of buying one and maintenance? Um, I think there is a 599 GDB in Carlis, if I'm not wrong, or was it Muda? To be honest, it's tempting. It is tempting for me as well. But, yeah, that's one. Fanana and GDB Fiorano. Yeah, it's a beautiful car. What a beautiful car. 599 GTP Fiorano What a gorgeous looking car For 480,000 oh, Please buy it, please buy it Please buy I think Ferrari have, have, has used this engine for a long time So uh, Go for it man, it's a Ferrari It's not a Camry, right? It's so nice Oh 612 horsepower for 480,000. Please buy it, bro. Please snatch it up. All right. Good luck to you, Mr. Joe. Please buy it. Please. Hi, right, is the first generation XC90 still a good buy? Are the parts easy to source? I don't think the parts are too hard to get. Um, but which year are you looking at? The first gen XC90 was on sale all the way to 2012, even 2013. All right? I love the car. In fact, I fell in love with the XC90 in the first generation when I traveled to Europe in 2012 and then I rented an XC90 and uh, driven across Europe. I love that car. The handling, the comfort, the ease of ingress, egress, third row, everything is just so well designed. I love it, that's why that changed my impression on Volvos. Alright? Um, to what extent can you possibly negotiate a price when buying a reconditioned car? Uh, it depends, it really depends. I can't answer you that. Um, you have to know what is out there and then work hard and go one by one. And if you found one that is good, when the more research you did, you have a, an, an idea in your mind, right? Hi, Bobby, the. Oh! The 16-inch new MacBook Pro is pretty good. It's very expensive, right? No way, man. I'm not buying Apple anymore with the shit that they make now. I, Even though I know, I know I'm saying this in a vengeful manner, but of course I want to fix the battery and I'm still so used to Mac OS. I gave up Windows back in 2007 and then I felt like I jumped forward 30 years in advancement. There's a lot of things that Macs can do that Windows couldn't do. And you're like, what? Where have I been all these years? However, this was back in 2007. 2007 Windows compared to year 2020 Windows. Windows has leaped forward, leaps and bounds. Whereas Macs, they have stayed largely the same. I can't notice any visible improvement and when it comes to UI. There are still so many things that doesn't make sense to this day. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. I've always wondered why do Chinese children always sit at the back of the car? Is it a cultural thing or what? Um, in a way, it's safer. Because the airbags are in front, and uh, 
I will only carry my child in the front seats when they really insist it and then I will switch off the airbags and it's only for nearby from my condo in my taman back driving out to main road no get to the back put them in the car seats until they grow like 78 years old they outsize the car seats lah. but it's always the car seats to me um, I mean when I go out to the main road taman no need uh, blah 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 uh, I want to buy a used car, eighty to eighty-five thousand budget. Accord Mazda six, Accord or Mazda six, Mazda six. Try and get the facelift, the, not the first, first, first Mazda six. Get the one where they updated it. I think it was in two thousand fifteen and sixteen, the year you mentioned. Get that one. All right, it out handles the Accord. It's nicer to drive in every way. It's, it's, nice nice the accord is not bad now ask yourself this thing do you go for exciting drives maybe you don't um, but if you're even if even when you're cornering on the highway you're going 160 right on the highway and all that the Mazda 6 feels better all right but I think for 2015 and 16 one perhaps the accord soundproofing is better all right. Um, what? This guy just wrote something weird. He said, I feel that cars are just a toy apart from the house. For instance, if you own a 1.2 million property, then the car can be a Merchelago or Aventado. Bro, a 1.2 million property in KL is nothing. Right? And uh, if you own a 1.2 million property in Tamalo, why would you want a Mercilago or Aventador? Who's going to look at you? Right? There's no place for you to cool. <laughs> um, now, you are, you are saying this from a perspective of normal people when they perceive expensive cars. You all see them as a status symbol. Oh, this guy wants to pretend to be rich or this guy wants to feel like a rich man. To you, it's just one line of rich and not rich but that's not how uh, a lot of these people see it. They see it as their hobby. They want to pursue it. They want to feel how to drive it. They want to uh, experience the car, the sound and all that. So they work hard. They squeeze their money. They pay. They feel pain. And then they get to own it. That sounds like a personal experience. To me, there's nothing about wanting to pretend to be whatever, you know. I wear my flip-flops, you know. I don't buy expensive clothes. I only have one watch, right? But I love cars. All right, so you don't have to think of it that way. You know, what level suit, what car, no such thing, okay? Uh, I really love the way GTR sounds, and this is the first time I heard a YouTuber saying the GTR sounds good. The GTR does sound good. It's just that people online, all the so-called car reviewers, love to hate the GTR. They love to repeat what Jeremy Clarkson said. It's a PlayStation on wheels. Fuck off lah. In terms of all the crazy technology, the Europeans have even more in their cars. Even Ferrari. You see, the, the funny thing with European reviewers, right? Especially British reviewers. When Japanese do the same thing, they say it's a PlayStation. It's like you're playing a game. But then when they're introducing a Ferrari, they will tell you the technology in the car that allows you to go drift mode 1, drift mode 2, Drift mode 3, and then they say it's good. Ford Fiesta RS, you know, RS, Ford, whatever, Focus RS. And they say the same thing as well, drift mode and all that. Why don't you say it's like playing a video game? The car is doing everything for you, it's not you. They just like to say all this thing, and then everybody repeats what they say. Um, 
530i or 530e in terms of overall blah blah 530i 530i okay uh, GR Supra or A45s Singapore viewer here hi Singaporean <laughs> Mr. Benjamin um, I would prefer the Supra I'm not sure about Singapore because A45s are everywhere they are everywhere okay and the Supra has some kind of hierarchical authority in the car guys world all right um, let's say cars like the RX-7 cars like a Ford Mustang you know Supra all this they have some kind of hierarchical uh, authority or ranking when it comes to that um, A45 yes it's very accomplished it's very capable but um, it has fast become the Mercedes-Benz version of Volkswagen Golf R. So, yeah. Get the Supra. Singaporean. And then 10 years later, don't renew your COE. Sell it to Malaysia for 20000 So that some Malaysians can buy it and then change the plate and then drive an illegal car somewhere out there in the kampongs. <laughs> That's what Malaysians do, right? <clears throat> it's illegal, huh, guys? Uh, currently, I drive a Waja from my parents. I'm thinking whether should I change the car to a Preve Suprema or an Inspira 1.8 manual. Um, are you in need of changing your car already? Or uh, what? Or your car is breaking down? Or you've driven it for a very, very long time? You want something better? Out of your choices, I really have a soft spot for the Suprema. But... Inspira 1.8 manual, oof, oof, that would be brilliant. Please get the Inspira 1.8 manual. Uh, CLA 45 or Mustang? How come I always have this question? <clears throat> Mustang, please. Killer road tax is, social, is also something that you should be proud of. You should be proud of, right? Hey, bro, you are so rich, you pay 300 ringgit road tax. Ah. Huh? You pay paise. Ah. Raise here, raise there, 380 ringgit. Ah. Right. Then you pay your 5 liter road tax, you photo stat it, or you take a picture of it, then you print on a t-shirt your road tax price. Oh, that would be so awesome, right? 12,000 ringgit. <laughs> the guy, the guy wear Versace, you know, Polo, Ralph Lauren, and flip the, the collar up, you wear a t-shirt with your road tax, <laughs> 12,000 I should I do that <laughs> okay <clears throat> hey Bobby Toyota Camry XV40 lovely car or a new MyV fuck the MyV get the Camry get the Camry get the Camry maintenance fee for the Camry none of course it's old uh, you need to take care of it but that car is, is absolutely reliable absolutely beautiful get the Camry get the Camry okay um, blah 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 hi I'm from Singapore Singapore third day of lockdown hey you all call it circuit breaker right very clashy uh, is the GLA suitable for someone in the 60s is it comfortable for long distance drive not very uh, if it is for uh, Miss 88, um, I don't know man, you are asking this in the GLA 45 video, it's not comfortable for you, to be honest, you get a lot of droning sound, provided you like the excitement, <laughs> provided you like that, um, no, there's a lot of other cars that are comfortable for long distance drives, home, not a GLA. Okay. Uh, a bit off topic here blah 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 can your team organize a driving technique that's what we want to do this year we actually wanted to do a, a driver training program we did we did car safety program we did uh, car safety workshops we did YouTube workshops actually this year we want to do a, a safety driving workshop yeah but 
this happened. You're paying premium for a freaking potato laptop. I totally agree with you, bro. You fucking fuck you. It's my one and only laptop now. I'm not gonna potato it, okay? Hi, Bobby. MX5 or 86 BRZ? ND MX5. Please get the MX5. Please, because there are too many 86 out there. And if your budget can afford an ND MX5, go for the MX5. Now, I'm going to get a lot of hate from 86 owners or BRZ owners. The MX5 drives better. <laughs> uh, sorry. I'm looking for... <laughs> Let me have some fun. Uh, uh, my throat drying. I'm looking for a used F34 or Subaru LeBron. BMW. Last time is so simple. Last time it's just E46 wagon, E46 sedan, E46 cabrio. Now they see all the fanboys love all this E, F, E, F, G, all this, right? They keep playing with that number. That's why when I say F30 M3, fuckers will come in and correct me. Bro, that is F81, bro. 82, 81, I don't know. Lah. To me, I'm like, BMW, <laughs> you just fell into BMW's trap. Uh, oh, 3 Series The 3 Series GT I have a soft spot for that car Or a Recon car, Recon Levo Recon Levo, you mean the 2 liter Turbo Levo, Levo You know Levo is a It's an Impreza platform, right? So it's not a very large car um, to me, the Lavore is just like an Impreza wagon. That's about it. Get the F thirty four lah. But in a way, yeah, get the F thirty four If you ask like this, it must be your one and only family car. Your the own car that you you are driving, and um, that you want to upgrade to. Get the F thirty four. You have yards of leg room at the back there, 3 Series GT. You get that mechanical spoiler when you go to a certain speed. You know, these are some of the little things that makes your car feel a lot more special than a Lavoie. And especially when your family members sit behind you. Whew, the approval they give you. Hi, Bobby. Civic FC 1.8 or the 2020 Corolla. Corolla. If you're not asking about the Civic Turbo, that means there's no advantage of power here. The Corolla outhandles the Civic. Yes. But I prefer the Civic dashboard uh, compared to the Corolla dashboard. Okay. Uh, Bentega V8 or Continental GT V8? I roughly get why, why you ask this question. You, know, you want to go into this segment, blah, blah. Now, I'm a Continental GT person because of the way you sit inside one, but I've driven the Bentega and it is such an amazing car. The Bentega is the most amazing SUV because the front passenger compartment, when you're driving in front, you feel like you're in a Continental. The layout of the dashboard, everything is so near to you. It's not like when I sit in my XC90, everything is so far away, I feel very spacious. But in the Bentega, when you're in the front seat, everything is so near you. You feel like you're driving a sports car when you're in front. So the front passenger compartment feels like a Continental GT. And then when you step into the rear, it feels like a flying spur. And the car handles, and the car is just... The Bentega. But the Continental GT is so beautiful. Ah, it's your money. <laughs> Both are fantastic, bro. And uh, I'm more of a Grand Tourer person, but I totally am impressed with the Bentega. Apart from the design. Uh. Yeah, the Continental GT is beautiful, the Bentega is not. 
Okay, I was considering an upgrade to a Master 3 hatchback. Who good for you. CX5, okay, normal. Uh, I cannot be compared. I know, blah, 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 blah. Put aside pricing, I will definitely go for the Master 3. As for the design, looks good, but for my heart, Master 3. But my mind is the pricing because I pay around the same price. Blah, 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 blah. Brain over heart. Brain over heart. Now, if your heart says Mazda 3 hatchback, go for it. Even though your brain computed, all the numbers and figures, matrix all come out, CX5, it's because your brain is trying to justify it. Now, if it is justified from the brain, then by the third year, when your loan is still four years away from completing, um, you will feel very different from having the Mazda 3 hatchback, which is the one that you really wanted. All right? And, uh, but to be honest, yes, the CX-5 is really, really worth it. There's no, there's no qualms about it. All right? Um, and, oh, currently you drive a city, you, you finish paying it off, you're 27 years old, you might need a family car soon. You might need a family car soon. Now put it this way, when your baby is still young and small, um, you don't need that much space for that baby. But of course the CX-5, your wife would love it, you know, it's comfortable, it's big, blah, blah. Um, uh, Another car that I think before is the GLA 2 litre or the GLA 45. Now the GLA is, is also pretty tight in space, alright? So, hmm, why don't you make some adjustments, right? Um, 160,000 hatchback. Normally, I would tell people, oh, go for it, blah, 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 blah. But now he said that he's... He might be getting married. He might need a family car soon. And uh, the Mazda 3, he's just worried for the car being a family car, you know. It's pretty rather tight at the back there. Put the baby seat and all that. And then... Um, it's not... It's not easy to change diaper behind and all that. Hmm. Hmm. Why don't you get a one-year-old Mazda 6? Solve your problem. Right? You get a sweet-looking car. Yes, it's not as sweet as the Mazda 3, but it's yards more practical. And one-year-old should be about the same price. And then it's even more spacious than a CX-5. Consider that. Okay. Hi Bobby, should I get an Accord Euro R C L one or a Silica seven gen? Seven gen is seven gen seven seven gen is the crap sheet front wheel drive. Silica. No, don't get that. If you're talking about the Silica GD4, then of course. Hoo -hoo, fantastic. Get the Euro R C L one, bro. The Silica. That was the last Silica, right? The the front wheel drive, triangle headlamp. Looks pretty cool, but that's about it, kind of car. Get the Euro RCL one. It's a fantastic car, especially when the VTAP kicks in at 5,500 RPM or something like that. Hi, Bobby. I would love to get a Ford Mustang. Not sure, 2.3 or 5 litre. Um, a lot of people who ask me for the Mustang, I'll just tell them to go for the 2.3. If... The 5 litre Rotex is something that buggers you, okay? If it is. Um, but the day I heard the 5 litre with a modified exhaust, oh my god. The stock exhaust sounds like crap, right? There's no sound from the stock exhaust, but holy crap. If you can afford it, Try it once, then you'll be like, oh, so this is how it feels like, having a 5-litre car. And you feel a little bit of sense of achievement in a way. 
it's like I don't know how to put this you know that kind of feeling of driving a big cylindrical car is a bit like when you are at the airport um, uh, gate and then they announce business class and <laughs> first class you may board first that kind of feeling when you stand up as you roll your luggage across other people who are in the economy class right I pay more you know but in terms of road tax you don't get more la. business class first class you do alright <laughs> but if it buggers you you can go for the 2.3 if you can afford it you just cannot take it over your mind do it once you don't want to die and then have, have not experienced driving a, a V8 or V10 legally and don't do that Langkawi stuff that that what Labuan Sabah Sarawak thing you know somehow when you do that yes you save a few grand uh, it's a great area but you don't sleep well at night you know you just kind of always that thing is is there buggering you yeah um blah 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 hi Bobby please keep Evo Enduro for extraordinary cars Mm. <laughs> you know what Bobby after seeing your video I went to Muda <laughs> I think the W221 is really something hmm I wish I'm brave enough even I am not brave enough to go for a W221 to be honest did I got the car wrong Mercedes W221 oh oh 221 get it Sorry, I thought it's a 220. 221, get it? It's uh, it's not unreliable. It's not unreliable. Uh, you can get it. Yeah, it's a, it's a complete bargain. And it's a baller of a car. 30, 40,000 ringgit. 50 maybe. Get the 221. It's beautiful S-Class. To me, it has the most beautiful dashboard of any S-Class because it's so clean. So, so clean. Okay? Um, hi Bobby just want your opinion on the 2014 A5 I'm looking for a coupe under 200,000 there is a lot of cars you can buy for under 200,000 and 2014 A5 might not be the best choice because you can see the same A5 from 2008 being sold for 70, 80,000 you're not going to buy the same car even though it's a newer year for 200k don't don't I mean if someone looking for cars if someone is asking me Bobby should I get an A5 or a Honda City blah 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 oh yes hey, you know fantastic blah 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 but you're trying to spend 200,000 on a car that, that there are shit loads out there being sold for 80-90,000 don't don't alright that would be a decision that you will regret for 200k what car can you get Coupe Can you squeeze your budget for another 20000 Get a Boxer or Cayman. Wait, wait, wait. Don't look so confident first. <laughs> did, I, did I got it wrong? Porsche. Boxita. Boxita, Boxita. Oh dear. Did I check the wrong thing? Porsche. Cayman. Cayman, Cayman. Oh no. It's not called a Cayman. Uh, it's called the Cayman one, right? Uh, it's still called the Cayman one. What the hell am I talking about? Sorry, ah. Uh. Give me some time. I will give you your answer. Yes! Yes! Get it! 2014 Porsche Cayman is the current generation Cayman, alright? Yes, they call it a 981 and now 718, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But it's 230,000, 220,000. Get this instead of an A5 for 200k, man. Your A5 will burn away that 200k next week. All right, don't. Get the Cayman. If you want a coupe and you have 200k budget, get the Cayman. It will hold its value there so well. Okay? XC90 T8 can get 200k. I know there are special deals out there. Some people get it, some people don't. Alright? Okay. Hi, Bobby bashing American mate. 
China succeeded in bio war. Huh? Americans lost their life. What? Here our great Bobby cutting apple. Hey, fuck you lah. My laptop got issue. You come here and... Oh, just because I'm a Chinese and I complain my apple means... I am part of the whole China versus US thing. That's your own racism. If I'm a freaking Indian, now, Indian, can I complain about my laptop? Hi Bobby, is the Mini, it's 2018 Mini, it's a great car, but I'm thinking of getting an XC60 Volvo, full spec. Do you think it will be as sporty as the Mini? Nope. But they handle just about the same compared to the Countryman, but not compared to the Cooper. The Cooper will be lovely to drive. Yep. Uh, we can go through local dealers to bring in a car that are not available in Malaysia, like a Tiguan 2 liter turbo. No. These cars need to be homologated. And in Malaysia, there's all these rules, and homologation costs a lot of money. So if this car is not listed, being homologated into here, you cannot bring it in new. <coughs> provided they are willing or you have a way to find an AP to get someone to help you bring the car in uh, you're gonna go through a shitload of trouble not worth going for a Tiguan 2 liter people usually do this kind of stuff for the Lamborghinis, Ferraris and all that all the special cars that are worth spending that kind of money you know the, the forwarder the, the guy who does all this to you might charge you 20,000 just to do it right you're going to pay that for a Tiguan or a Kia? No. Alright, it's not as simple as that. Hi, Bobby. Your comments on 2017 Passat versus Accord. You choose the Accord. I'm a G9 Ac Honda user. And I want to upgrade. And a B8.5 Passat looks like a better deal compared to the Honda Accord 1.5 Turbo. Yeah, the 1.5 Turbo Accord is ugly, man. I don't care man, if it offends you, it is ugly, it is ugly, the current aircon is so beautiful and then the new one looks like ah. I know they try to be edgy lah, but ah. um, If you're upgrading from a Honda, what would you choose? Now, from your statement, it looks like your budget can go all the way up to 200,000, right? So now you're driving a, why do you keep mentioning G9 Honda? Okay, G9. <laughs> um, what would I choose if my budget is about 200k and I want to change a car? Um, okay, if you're thinking about a B8.5 Passat, which is about, yeah, about this kind of price as well. So, you're thinking of a car about this size. You see, when you go from, when you come from an Accord to a Passat, right, you are downsizing, you know. Accord is larger than a Passat, right. Um, how do I put this? Yeah, Accord is larger than a Passat. <laughs> um, what cars can you get? Hmm, I always say this, is oh, and you want a new car, right? You don't want a used car, right? Mr. Shiram. Oh. What would you choose? Oh, very difficult, eh? Because uh, if I ask you to go for a 3 Series or C Class, you are downsizing massively, right? You go into a much, much smaller car. Have you considered going into an SUV? If you're going into an SUV at this price point, you can get an X3 or a... Uh, but that will be used car. Try and get a... Pre reg X3 or something, right? Um, I know, not easy for Camry and Accord owners to upgrade if it is within the same price point. If you're willing to pay more, Lexus ES. Wonderful car. Um, hi, Bobby. Mazda 6 Wagon or Subaru Legacy GT Wagon? Because my Odyssey cannot join Enduro. Oh, so you want, just want a car to join Enduro. Get the Legacy GT Wagon. Is it the one that I used to own? Or this is the 2010 onwards one? Both are, are fine. Uh, thinking of getting my wife a Lexus CD200H. What year? 
be mindful there are there are Toyota Prius owners where when their car is about 70 years old some of them have replaced their batteries so CD200H has the same structure same design so if it is too old better not why don't you buy your wife a mini mm -hmm. every woman loves mini mini makes them sexy hey I've said this right hmm Hi Bobby, uh, there's a lot of demos on 330i, blah blah blah. Hey, I thought I answered this question already 12 hours ago. What? That's damn weird, uh, this thing. Okay, would you consider a 2016 G30 530i or an X3? I will always go for a 5 series, 530i compared to an X3, 5 series. Alright, um, blah 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 blah. MK6 Golf R or MK7 Golf GTI? MK7 Golf GTI, it drives beautifully. MK7 platform drives way better than an MK6 platform. Alright? Uh, which would you choose? A35 Hot Hatch or a 330i? But they are similar in price. Is it? Which country you are from? Similar price? A35 versus a BMW 330i? I would go for the A35, man. It's something more special. I get a, I get a legit AMG batch, not a M Sport body <laughs> Yep. Yeah. May I know, is it worth buying a Land Cruiser, 2008 Land Cruiser, 448000 It's definitely not worth it, but there's a reason why it's so expensive. A 12-year-old Toyota Land Cruiser, 150000 the reason the used car value is so high is because these cars have a high demand. They are expensive to begin with, they are freaking long lasting, they look like crap inside out, but they work. That's why they charge you 148000 for it. Uh, have you considered going for uh, FJ Cruiser? FJ Cruiser? Cost of ownership, I can't tell man, it's a 2008 car, I can't tell. Sorry. <clears throat> I mean, if, if it's a 12-year-old car still selling for 150000 right? That, that means you know the running cost is not very high. <laughs> That's why people want it, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, would you prefer a Ford Focus RS MK2 or MK3? Wow. Um, I'm, I've never really... I don't... MK3 is this one. MK2 is the one that I drove my friends. Oh! I prefer the MK2 design. Yeah. The MK3 is more generic. But I like the MK2 design. The one that I drove. Ooh. But interior looks like shit. Huh? <laughs> uh... Hi Bobby, is it worth buying a Lexus RCF? Okay, this guy is asking 2016 Lexus RCF Let me announce your name first Mr. Lingesh Kumar Mr. Lingesh, you are the man of the night Lexus RCF, what's the price? Ooh. What is this? 5 litre or 2 litre? Why the dealer put two things there? So the RCF is 378,000 and then he asked another car which is uh, an Aston Martin DB9 2008 Aston Martin DB9 2008 I saw one guy very desperately wanting to sell it. It was supposed to be 280,000 but then one guy wants to say yeah, 245k and this guy is trying to sell. He is a bit desperate because the Aston Martin DB9B, the 2007 one, should be about 350,000 to 360,000 but there's one desperate guy there, 2008, 245, I don't know whether the car got issue or not, I'm not sure. There's a Volante, there's a DB9, 
298,000. Hmm. Now put it this way, brother. If you buy the Lexus RCF Coupe at 370, 380,000, hmm. in the next seven, eight years, your car might go down. No, in the next six, seven years, your car might go down to 100. Uh, I don't know. 150, 160k. If you buy the Aston Martin for 250,000, 10 years later, it will still be worth 250,000. Yeah. It will not go below 200k. Alright. Maserati Ghibli 3 liter. Uh, beautiful car. Uh, I don't particularly enjoy the drive. Last time when I drive the Ghibli, I don't know whether they have updated the suspension or not. Hmm. Is, uh, I mean, if you can afford it and buy the Lexus RCF, you buy it now, drive it for one or two years, because there are still recon units, they're stuck there at 370, 380,000. If you can afford it, you want to try it now, you can buy it now, and then you drive it for another two, three years, and then you sell it out at 320, 330, before your, before your car reaches like eight years old, like that. Um, then you sell it for 300 ish before it drastically go down then you can enjoy your Aston Martin or something like that then you get to try two cars yeah see you have to understand sometimes when the car is so rare there are a few units stuck as recon cars the dealers couldn't let it go but they bring in the car expensive it, they are still putting it up at 370 380k you really want to try the car you try the car you own it for a while one two years then you sell it back at 350 340 their cars are still there 360 370 you enjoyed the car you still sell it out or 320 330 all right hmm. would like to get your opinion bobby mr david on a 2013 640i Grand Coupe, oh lovely car, or a G3530i M Sport, hmm, both are under 25k mileage, the Grand Coupe local spec, hmm, very low spec, very low mileage huh, for 2013, I love driving with performance, blah blah blah, currently I own an F30 328i, now, <coughs> I am a 6 series owner, okay, the Grand Coupe is beautiful. When you drive a Grand Coupe out, there is a 5 Series G30, 530i with you, right? And then you go to the Hotel Valet. The Valet will ask the 5 Series, even though if the 5 Series is in front, the Valet maybe will park his car in the basement and then will park your 6 Series in the entrance. That being said, if you love driving with performance, the G30 5 Series massively outhandles the 6 series grand coupe or a 6 series coupe massively outhandles it the new bmw 2 liter turbo engine even though on paper it's not as powerful as our 3 liter turbo 320 horsepower engine but our engines are lazy the new 2 liter turbo from bmw is so nice to rev it will out handle out comfort the Grand Coupe so provided if you really like the Grand Coupe design and um, you should go for the 5 series granted 5 series are everywhere it's not as pretty as the 6 series Grand Coupe all right so the 6 series Grand Coupe might give you a feeling of a massive upgrade from your 3 series F33 series but in terms of the drive it cannot be compared to the G30 all right um, Hi Bobby, I'm a 22 year old guy, 55,000 cash in hand, Z4 Audi TT Civic FD2. And for maintenance, I have 5,000 for the first changes after I get the car, so total budget is 60,000 and one main point. I'm 95 kg with a height of 175 cm, so you are as heavy as I am, but 4 cm shorter, so we are both fat. <laughs> uh, First to cut out is the Honda Civic, and uh, you're a 22 year old guy. There's the TT, there's the Z4. Get the Z4, bro. Because if you buy the Z4 now at 55,000 or 60,000, 
Uh, however, the maintenance or whatever, it won't be too crazy if the car is not a crap shit car. Lah, huh? You can drive it for 5, 7, 8 years and you will still sell the car at this price that you buy. If you bought the Audi TT, I believe it will go down further because there's just too many of them out there. If you buy the Civic FD, <laughs> it will be 12000 one day. Okay, come on bro, leave Tim Cook alone. The words aren't so nice to be used online against him. Let's complain to Apple or just fucking Tim Cook publicly online as he was the blah 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 blah. <laughs> Come on lah, Steven. I'm just having fun here complaining about my laptop, right? But we all see how Tim is not doing a good job at Apple, right? Um, no, I won't leave Tim alone. He kicked away our favourite British guy. Remember that guy? Our food was designed. I, I can't speak of him. Huh? No, man. Tim. No. Uh, would you prefer the Z4 or 86 for a fun car to drive? 86. It drives better than the Z4. Miles better. Okay. Hi, Bobby. Currently, I own an Elza. Paid off. I want to get an SUV. Only 3% in my family. Why would you want an SUV? <laughs> X70 higher spec or the CX5 2 liter high spec? Thank you in advance. Um, given the choice you gave me, right, I would actually go for the CX5 because it is a new car, current model, current design. And the X70, we know there is a facelift somewhere in China, but of course, there's the, the, that's what you get locally. But uh, granted, the X70 does have a lot of nice features, and uh, both are fantastic choices. Because the CX-5 looks a lot more expensive. Alright. Um, and uh, the X-70 feels very expensive inside. Especially the seats, the leather and all that. It's a wonderful car. Uh, be mindful of the X-70's boot space is very, very tiny. For an SUV. Okay. If your friend coming from US have two huge luggages, you want to proudly drive your X-70 to fetch him with your, all your family in your car, your boot will not fit his luggage. I'm, I'm serious. All right? uh, it's rather small for a mid-sized SUV. Um, buy Mac Pro if you can afford it. I cannot afford another Mac Pro. This is 15,000 ringgit. Oh my god. What do you think about the Subaru XV? Brilliant car. It's a brilliant car. Okay, oh shit man, there's so many comments. Uh, hi Bobby, I'm the same bastard asking about 159, Satria Neo, blah blah blah. Um, so is the 330 CI on Muda a better option than the Z3? The problem with the Z3, right, is the only one out there in the market. I'm not sure about the condition. I'm not sure about that 1.9 liter engine. I'm not sure about anything about that generation, the late 90s of... Uh, BMWs, they are largely not reliable. I would say maybe a 159 is even more reliable than a, <coughs> than a mid-90s um, German car. Yeah. Um, hi, Bobby. I thought a Suprema has a shine under 40k. Uh, Suprema, Suprema can join Enduro. Yes, if you didn't know it, Suprema can join Enduro. Yep, it is listed there because it's a rare car. Alright, hi Bobby, I have three cars now, I have uh, currently owning an Alfa Romeo 147, hey, you're a car guy man, you need to ask my ask me man, my daily drive is a CRV and a Peugeot 208, my wife driving, I'm thinking of letting go of the Peugeot, my wife says it's too small for her, and the Alfa, I now have a 3 month baby boy and a 4 year old daughter, now considering the new Corolla. <laughs> Sorry, because he's an alpha guy. Um, Mazda 3 2 liter. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Mazda 3 hatchback, please. Uh. <laughs> okay, and the funny thing. So he said he currently drives a 147. Two door 147. Hey, that's a keeper, man. Um, two door 147. And then his daily drive is a CRV, and then he has a Peugeot 208. And then he's thinking of letting go of the Peugeot and the Alpha, and uh, he's thinking of getting a, a Corolla. 
if, if he buys a Corolla, the Corolla will be for the wife, then he will still be driving his CRV. But if he buys the Mazda 3 hatchback, then he will drive the Mazda 3 hatchback and he will pass the CRV to his wife. But his wife said the CRV is too big for her. Now, your wife said the CRV is too big for her is because she's currently driving the 208. After she drive the CRV for two weeks, she wouldn't say the same thing anymore. She would just drive the CRV like how it is, right? And she will start experiencing the benefits of owning the CRV. The taller ride height means very hard to scrape the road curbs. I don't know why women are always so afraid that they will, they will scrape the road curbs. Even though they never scrape the road curbs, they will always say they are afraid they will scrape the road curbs. I don't know why. But a CRV is hard taller. And then she will appreciate all the room in the boot to put her shoes, her yoga mat, all her stuff and that. And then you can drive your Mazda 3 hatchback. So repeat what I said just now to your wife. Kagai. Kita jaga kita. Uh, Bobby, what's your opinion on the Jaguar XJ? Who, who, who? Out of nowhere, two person asked this question. Good car. Please get it. Beautiful. All right. Swift Spot, second hand. Yes, Swift Spot is worth it. Go for it. Um, seven seater MPV for our family. Budget around 200k. Recon Valfire. Hey, I think I answered this question already. Oh, I arrived. At... I'm done. Yes. Oh, it's like homework every day, man. Thank you so much for watching this crazy long video. Uh, again, I have a thousand videos in my channel over the past three years of car reviews and all that and if you look down on the on the description in all my videos you can see all my team members our Evo club url our website url our facebook if you like what i'm doing help me with two things subscribe and then come to our facebook like our facebook interact with us all right thank you so much cheers